And it is so discouraging to think that you are working so hard and almost done and for you to only be two centimeters. I get that. I feel that for you. I feel that for my patients. I'm discouraged too because I know you're working hard. <laughs> beautiful birthing people welcome back to my channel today I have a video for you guys all about something that happens sometimes during early labor an extra little phase of labor called prodromal labor and while it can be a little bit of a drag and a little bit discouraging I'm hopeful that this video will give you some tools to recognize prodromal labor if you're experiencing it and then deal with it accordingly so that you can move on to active labor and have a happy and healthy delivery so without further ado Let's go ahead and jump into it. When we're talking about prodromal labor, I think it's important that we first define what is labor. Labor is really just defined as contractions that get closer together and stronger, coupled with cervical change. And cervical change can mean a few different things. It can mean that your cervix is dilating. Your cervix is going to go from not dilated at all, all the way to 10 centimeters, fully dilated, no cervix in the way. It's also going to thin out from about two centimeters all the way to as thin as the piece of paper before it's fully dilated. And then also another part of that cervical exam is the station of your baby. So your baby, in combination with the dilation and the effacement of your cervix, is going to rotate and descend into your pelvis, and that is called the station. To have labor, you must have contractions and the cervical change together. So prodromal labor is when you have contractions that may or may not be regular, that may range from mild to feeling pretty strong, that do not get closer together, though they can be on the regular side, that do not get any stronger, that do not cause cervical change. And often this prodromal labor, these contractions that don't really take us anywhere quite yet, happen over a few days to a few weeks Often at the same time every day, you'll have start and stop labor. So things will start up, you're like, oh my gosh, is this really it? And then things peter back down. Or over a period of several days, you have these start and stop contractions that really send you for a loop because you keep thinking, is this labor? And maybe you're going in to see your provider or you're, you're monitoring them at home and it's not labor because we still don't have a baby. So frustrating and so discouraging too. So. That is what prodromal labor is. It does not happen to everybody, but it can be a part of that early labor picture. Now, another thing that sometimes gets confused with prodromal labor are Braxton Hicks contractions. Braxton Hicks contractions are tightening of your uterus. They differ from true contractions with how they tighten. So a true contraction tightens all the way up the muscle and makes the top of your uterus bigger and that's where the pressure is coming from whereas a Braxton Hicks contraction is more of just a general squeeze on the side so it's a tightening of your uterus that might be slightly uncomfortable but it's not painful and it can happen anywhere from your second trimester all the way up until delivery. If we put a full-term patient on the monitor, they often are having tightening of their uterus that is perceptible to our monitor because our monitor perceives that change in tightness and muscle tone to the uterus, while the person who is experiencing these contractions might not even realize that they're having them. Braxton Hicks contractions, super irregular. They can often be cured or made better by resting, drinking, and eating. Eating, and they are often pretty long in duration. Braxton Hicks contractions are often called practice contractions, but prodromal labor differs from Braxton Hicks because it is more painful, it can be more regular, and it happens more for a specific reason than a Braxton Hicks contraction would. So let's go ahead then and jump into why do we have prodromal labor? Well, the answer is we're not 100% sure. But what we do know is there are a few theories and a few different reasons why you might be experiencing prodromal labor. 
Sometimes we experience prodromal labor because it is our body's way of attempting to get baby into a better position. Sometimes baby is not entering the pelvis or applying to the cervix in a really great position. They could be coming in sunny side up where they're facing out instead of down. They could be coming in asynclitic, so to one side or the other. And many of these things will make your body not dilate as effectively because you're not having the baby be able to press down on the cervix as firmly with their noggin and they're also not able to descend as fully into the pelvis. So sometimes we have the prodromal labor because your body is trying to rotate baby into a better position. Another reason why we might have prodromal labor is if we have some sort of uterine anomaly or cervical difference. So for example, having fibroids on your uterus might cause some prodromal labor or if you have any scarring on your cervix. So some people will have had a leap procedure, which is a procedure where they scrape off cancerous cells from your cervix, this can lead some scarring on your cervix. And cervical scarring sometimes takes good strong contractions to actually break open that scar tissue. So sometimes these contractions take a while for us to actually see any progression with the cervical exam. We often see prodromal labor in first pregnancies because your body's kind of trying to figure out what to do. And then if it's greater than your third pregnancy, because the body, it knows what to do, but it's just tired and it's trying to get everything all synchronized and get baby in the best position possible. Sometimes we also see prodromal labor when people are feeling very, very anxious or they're feeling very nervous about labor or about the processes that are happening. I have a video all about the hormones that influence labor that I'm going to link for you guys in the iCards, but we know so much of labor progressing normally and naturally is feeling safe and secure and not feeling watched and feeling like you're in a safe place. That's going to make sure that we don't have cortisol and all of our adrenaline pumping through our body causing a fight or flight response which can make labor stop progressing and it also is going to allow our body to pump us full of oxytocin endorphins and melatonin which all work together to enhance labor and also enhance how we feel about the contractions and how we cope with the pain of the contractions so getting in a good headspace mentally can definitely be helpful with prodromal labor as well what can you do if you are experiencing prodromal labor or if you think that you might be experiencing prodromal labor? I think it's important to say, what are our goals if we're trying to do something about prodromal labor? Really, our goals are that we make prodromal labor stop. So either we make it stop because it just stops, nothing's happening, but you're no longer uncomfortably contracting with no cervical change, or it stops because it's moving on into active labor and you start to have cervical change. These tips and tricks, I can't tell you which way your body's gonna go, but my hope is that your body goes one way by using these tips and tricks. What I recommend for everybody in early labor is that you go into labor and you ignore it for as long as humanly possible. This might help if you're experiencing early prodromal labor that you don't focus on it, right? If you are supposed to be upright and moving, you're upright and moving. But if you're supposed to be asleep, be asleep, okay? Resting is going to be so important so that when these contractions do get stronger and closer together and really start working on changing your cervix, you have the stamina to continue to do that. Resting is going to be really, really important in this early prodromal labor if you're able to, which I know sometimes that's not always possible because these can be pretty uncomfortable as well. So eating and drinking something with some good electrolytes as far as drinking, so maybe some Gatorade, maybe some coconut water, and then eating something that is a good mixture of proteins and carbohydrates to fuel your body, to give your body and your uterus energy to work. Because at full term, your uterus uses second most energy only to your heart. So your uterus is doing a lot of work. It needs a lot of blood flow to get it doing what it needs to do. And your muscles need glucose, sugar to work. Getting yourself into a good headspace can also be really important. So you might find this by listening to meditations. YouTube has a lot of really good labor and pregnancy meditations. You might find this from listening to music that you like, or even sometimes watching a show, something maybe that you think is funny or something that is familiar to you. It's all going to help you relax and potentially meditate and get into a good headspace for labor. Now, if you've done all of these things, you're still having these super painful contractions 
actions that are not changing your cervix, they're not getting closer together, they're not getting more regular, and you just need a break, you need something to change, I really recommend hydrotherapy at this point. So if you have a tub and you are able to get into a tub, definitely do that because hydrotherapy can do a couple of things. One, it might totally pitter out these contractions altogether. Or two, it might help loosen and soften things and allow your body to rest and relax while at the same time allowing baby to rotate. Getting in the tub with some Epsom salts, taking a shower if you can't get in the tub, and just letting that warm water really work on loosening your muscles and dealing with some of that stress that you're holding can be really beneficial. Another thing that we can do after we've done that hydrotherapy, our muscles are nice and softened, everything's nice and loose, is we can work on balancing our bodies. So I've spoken before about spinning babies. Spinning babies is a whole mindset about allowing our bodies to be balanced and ready so that babies can do their one job, which is to rotate and to descend. So Spinning Babies has a three sisters of balance that work together to help balance and relax your fascia, your ligaments, your muscles, your pelvic floor, everything to get ready for baby. So there are three different things that go into this. First, we're gonna help relax the fascia and Spinning Babies recommends a jiggle for this. So somebody basically coming and jiggling your thighs and jiggling your, your buttocks as well for about 20 minutes. And you can just totally relax and rest into this and your fascia will relax as well. After that, you can balance your ligaments, which are what are holding your uterus in place that can get twisted or can be tighter on one side than the other by doing a forward leaning inversion. Now, forward leaning inversion is when you are perched at the edge of a couch or at the edge of stairs and you lean forward, putting your weight on your forearms and have your head down below your hips for three breaths and then you come back up and swing your legs back out almost like a mermaid so that you are keeping everything nice and in alignment. And then the third thing that you can do is a side lying release. So you will do this for potentially three contractions on each side, five to 15 minutes, whatever feels best for you. You're gonna need a partner for this one as well. And you lie with your shoulders and your hips in alignment on the side of a bed. And with your bottom leg straight, the top leg goes over the edge of the bed. Somebody's holding onto your hip and they can just gently rock your hip as you are relaxing that leg and letting that leg come down. And you wanna make sure that you repeat it on the other side so that everything is nice and even. All of those comfort measures can be done in labor, but they also can be done in pregnancy to help make you feel more comfortable and help baby settle into the best position possible. Now there are contraindications for some of the spinning babies moves. I'm going to leave their website linked down below so that you can really run through it. But the big contraindication for the forward leaning inversion is that you don't want to do that if you have issues with high blood pressure and you don't want to do that if you have any issues with pressure in your eyes like a glaucoma issue. In general, those are safe for pregnancy, but again, always check with your doctor before you're doing anything that you see in a YouTube video. Now, once we have your body balanced, we can work on rotating baby because remember a lot of times prodromal labor is caused because your baby is not quite in the perfect position yet. Your body's trying to get your baby in the perfect position. So we can try and help your baby to rotate. There is a circuit or a series of three different moves that is called the mile circuit. It was created by a wonderful doula and I again will leave this link below. Basically our goal with the mile circuit is to allow baby to back up reposition and then come back down into the pelvis so that they can be born more easily and have your labor go more quickly. In the mile circuit, with each of these three moves, you're going to do each for about 30 minutes. You don't wanna stop while you're doing them, so you wanna make sure that you're prepared having already gone to the bathroom, having a drink of water nearby, having all of your supplies nearby. Mostly what you're just gonna need is a lot of pillows and perhaps a support from a support person to help you maintain these positions. The first position, like I said, is going to be aimed at helping baby get out of your pelvis so that they can readjust themselves. So what you're going to do is open knee chest position where your chest is on the floor, your knees are on the ground, and the angle between your thighs 
size and your belly is greater than 90 degrees. This really opens things up and allows baby to come back out. If this position is difficult for you to stay in by yourself, you can have a support person stand behind you with a sheet around your upper thighs to kind of keep your legs back. But ideally you're gonna stay in this position for 30 minutes before switching to your next position, which is going to be an exaggerated left lying position. So you're gonna lie on your left side with your left leg nice and straight, and you're gonna try and get as much onto your belly as possible. You're going to bring your right leg up and open. If you're in the hospital or if you have access to one, you can use a peanut ball for this. You could also just use a whole bunch of pillows and you'll hang out in this position for about 30 minutes. And if you're able to fall asleep, by all means, please fall asleep because the next movements that we're going to be are a little bit more active. So for the next part, we're just going to be working on keeping our pelvis asymmetrical. So babies come back, and hopefully rotated, and now we want baby to come back down into our pelvis. So that's where that asymmetrical positioning can come in handy. You have a couple different options. You can do lunges, you can do some stair walking, or you can do some curb walking. Anything to keep your pelvis asymmetrical. You just want to be careful with doing any of these because your center of gravity is a little bit different than it used to be. We don't want you falling. So if you're doing the stairs, hold on to the railing. If you're doing curb walk, please walk with somebody else. And if you're doing lunges, have something in front of you that you can hold on to. The wall, a chair, something. Because please don't fall. That is my goal for you. Have a baby and not fall. Got it? <laughs> so hopefully, by completing that mild circuit, by balancing your body, by resting and hydrating and using your hydrotherapy, either your contractions have stopped or your contractions are now moving on to active labor. Now, if they're starting to move on or if they're still continuing but we're not seeing as much cervical change and you've done all of those things and you've worked on balancing and resting and hydrating, what can you do? you have a couple different options. So you can do some of the natural induction methods such as nipple stimulation. So what you wanna do with nipple stimulation, and it's gonna release oxytocin, which might increase those contractions for you, is you wanna stimulate one side, you or a partner, you have options, until you get a contraction, stop stimulating, let the contraction pass, you do your working through the contraction, and then move on to the other side. Conversely, you can also use a pump. I would not do nipple stimulation for more than about 30 minutes to an hour to get things going, simply because you really don't wanna damage your nipples before you have a baby that comes out to breastfeed. We don't want things to be sore before we've even begun. And you can sit there and twiddle your nipples all day long, and if your body's not ready for labor, it's not going to happen, which freaking stinks. Other options would be maybe you've gone into the hospital, maybe you've gone into the hospital a few times. In the hospital, you do have the option potentially of doing some therapeutic rest where they give you a medication. Sometimes it's an anti-nausea medication. Sometimes it is something like Benadryl or a sleeping medication or even a narcotic to allow you to rest and sleep during these contractions that aren't changing your cervix yet in hopes that either you wake up and it's better or you wake up in active labor. Sometimes that can be an option that you stay in the hospital and do therapeutic rest or they send you home with something or a recommendation for something that you can take at home for therapeutic rest. The other option in the hospital is potentially you could seek an elective induction or an elective way to augment your labor. I have a video all about inductions and many of the induction tools could also be augmentation tools. So just depending on where you are with your cervix and what you and your provider decide to do, perhaps adding in a prostaglandin, adding in oxytocin, or artificially breaking your water. But I'd really caution you against something that you can't take back, like breaking your water in this early prodromal time of labor, because if your baby is not changing your cervix, we wanna kind of get to the bottom of that before we move on. If your baby is in a bad position and then we break your water, basically we take away that cushion where they would be more easily able to rotate into a better position and lock and load them into a position that perhaps now we are stuck in just something to think about. I'd really recommend doing all of the other things first before moving on to the labor induction or augmentation by hospital route. But 
this is your body, this is your labor, and these are the choices that you have. So I just want you guys to have all of the choices, all of the options, so hopefully you can turn this prodromal labor into some active labor and do your thing. Now the good news about people who experience prodromal labor, while it is a drag at the time, and it is so discouraging to think that you are working so hard and almost done, and for you to only be two centimeters, I get that, I feel that for you, I feel that for my patients. I'm discouraged too, because I know you're working hard. When active labor does actually start, it often, not always, but often, goes very quickly. So that is my hope for you, that you are able to get through these contractions, move on to a fast active labor, and get your beautiful baby in your arms as quickly as possible. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I'm going to make a video all about precipitous labor too, which is the opposite of prodromal labor when your labor from start to finish is three hours or less. Overwhelming to say the least. So definitely subscribe to this channel if you want to check out that video. It should be coming out hopefully next week. And until next time, bye guys.